Are you f-ing kidding me? That just happened? Uh, I, I swear to God, I just said that. I looked up in the sky and I'm like, are you f-ing kidding me? Remember this goal? Fake the goal! <laughs> What Olaf Kolzik does. What do you think Kolzik's thinking when that went in? And he talks about it in this episode of I Was In Net 4. The 2005-2006 NHL season was a pretty historic one. The league was coming off losing an entire season to a lockout. You had generational stars entering the league, and there were a whole batch of new rules. And the one that was getting all the attention, at least early on, was the addition of the shootout. But not everyone was a fan. I mean, initially when it first started, I thought, okay, this isn't bad. The fan, you know, the, the fans deserve this kind of entertainment after missing a whole year. And uh, but then as it, as it kept going on, I, I just found it to be. I, I didn't think it was the right way to, to end the game. At the end of the day, I'm still not a big fan of it, but it is what it is, and it's the NHL now, and and obviously I'm on a I'm on a highlight reel because of it. So this was so new that teams didn't even put it high on their priority list at practice. I mean, I think we did it once a week, um, just as a kind of a competition thing after practice. Um, back then, we didn't realize how important those wins were um, because it was the first year for it. And now there's such an emphasis on it. Constant, you know, goaltenders, you know, watching video on players before games. And yeah, there's a lot more emphasis on it. But don't forget, this was new to the fans as well. So when the Caps and Rangers were deadlocked after 65 minutes at Madison Square Garden, this wasn't just a shootout. It was an event. This place is going crazy. Mike, Mike there's 18,200 people standing up. Uh, it was all new. Uh, it was put in place for fan entertainment. I mean, it's it's one-on-one competition. In the moment, it was it was great to be a part of. And MSG to me has always had a I've always had a fondness for that building, and and, and to be a part of that, you know, win or lose, it was still epic. An epic is an appropriate word because this thing just kept going. At times, it even bordered on being silly. <laughs> you see <laughs> Kulzik just was wiping his, his helmet saying, I got away with one there. My strategy was try to get the guy to hold on to it as long as he can so that there's that element of him mishandling it or shooting wide. And so, you know, when that happened, um, obviously I dodged the bullet and, and, and you know, I showed a little bit of animation there when I went, you know, phew. When it was all said and done, Kolzik stopped 11 of 15 shots, 10 of which came with the game on the line. But one goal still bugs him, and it's probably not the one you're thinking of. The goal that really disappointed me was with uh, Jason Strudwick right before that. I mean, we'd scored. I stopped him. We win the game. And, you know, he's a he's a journeyman defenseman, and, and nothing against Jason. I know him personally. Um, but, you know, I felt that I could have stopped him. And so by when he scored, that, that really that really irked me. And all the while, there was this 23-year-old rookie goaltender on the other end of the ice, matching Kolzig, save for save. Shootouts, two fakes, Lundqvist gloves it! Oh, his glove has been good tonight! When we were battling one-on-one, I, I did think, like, okay, when's this, this kid's playing in New York City and it's a shootout, when's he gonna crack? And I think that was just an early indication of, you know, the type, type of goalie he was going to end up being. Oh, what a show these goaltenders are putting on here. Awesome show. And they you, are. you can't go back to another player. You have to go through your whole roster first. And that was just fine with Kolzik. With the shootout, you're always sending your best players first. So it, as it went on, I mean, there were, you know, the guys weren't as skilled or guys that, you know, they ended up being defensemen coming down at the end. Um, you, you just felt more confident against the guy that was coming down on you. And then in round number 15, with the game on the line, enter Malik now. Six foot six, 238, not a noted goal scorer, but he's going to give it a shot here. It, Merrick Malik. Merrick Malik. Malik has not scored this year. In on Kolzik. Fake the legs! <laughs> oh, Malik went between his legs! I don't care who you are as a goalie. Uh, there is no way in hell anybody would have predicted the move that he made. Did it so effortlessly and like he's been doing it since he was a kid. I saw this move a couple of years ago, like many years ago, and back in Czech, I tried it a couple of times on the practice, and well, I said, well, why not? You know, maybe it was going to work, you know, because Oli is a great goalie, and maybe that's going to surprise him a little bit. I, actually, after that year, I became teammates with Merrick in Tampa, and, um, you know, we talked about it a little bit, and, and 
just getting to know his personality uh, that that next year, I, I I could see why he did it. He he basically went down. He had nothing to lose. He didn't care. He was in Madison Square Garden, New York City, and he just wanted to try to try something to you know to spice it up. And if he would have missed it, he would have went to the bench and giggled about it. And here we are, 15 years later, and people are still asking Kolzig about it. Sometimes, even two at a time. You guys reached out to me. I had a buddy of mine that same day text me and said, ah, oh, guess what I just watched on the NHL Network. And you're right, they're the same time every year, the anniversary, I know. It wasn't more about me than it was about Merrick and him pulling it off and, and not me not making the save. I mean, that's to me, that's what it comes down to. I was disappointed we lost. But like I said, I tip my hat to him because it was an amazing, amazing play that took balls and he, and he pulled it off. 